Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today we are going to discuss the WISE postdoc for women, that is W-I-S-E, WISE. And this is essentially given out by the Department of Science and Technology, also known as the DST of the Government of India. And the aim of this fellowship is to support women in science and technology. Essentially, these are women who have completed their PhD and they want to do a postdoc. Now, one of the interesting thing about this postdoc is that the age limits are given from 27 to 60 years. So this is a very large age limit. And if we look at many scholarships which terminate at age 35, this is not like that. It gives you a lot of time here, 27 to 60 years is a lot of time and this is given for research in the basic and applied sciences. So one of the aims of this fellowship was to bring back women into the science and technology domain who had left for some personal family reason and there are many women who finished their PhD and for some reason they may not be able to work and after a few years they may again think about getting back into their research careers and so this fellowship is one good way to get into that now interestingly this fellowship clearly says that if you are less than 27 years you are not eligible but again there are many different fellowships where you can apply in case you are less than this age for example you could apply for the dst fellowship itself which is there for the postdoc the dst inspire fellowship and so on now, the scientific disciplines which are funded are physics and mathematical sciences, number two, chemical sciences, number three, life sciences, number four, earth and atmospheric sciences, and number five, engineering and technology. So essentially, this covers the entire range of subjects which are known as STEM, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So I think you can apply here. Now, if you are in slightly tertiary disciplines, I would still say you may be able to apply because sometime if you can connect your field to some element of the sciences, you may be able to apply for the postdoctoral position because do remember that at postdoc level, you are doing multidisciplinary or even interdisciplinary research. And so some of these things may be permitted in this fellowship. So there's nothing wrong in applying. Now, if we look at the eligibility specifically mentioned in the fellowship here, you should not be in a regular employment. So essentially, this fellowship is meant for people who are actively looking for some job or they are currently not employed and they want to get back into the system. Now, if you are a temporary worker, you can apply. For example, you could be a research associate, you could be a postdoctoral fellow, you could be a research staff at some lab or university or some company, or even be working in some temporary teacher capacity for that matter, you can apply for this fellowship. And if you do get this fellowship, then you have to leave your current temporary job and spend all your time in this fellowship. So that's one of the expectations which is there in this WISE PDF or WISE postdoctoral fellowship. Now the educational qualifications for the women scientists are that they should have a PhD in the basic or applied sciences. So again, being a postdoctoral fellowship, it does require that you have a doctorate if you want to apply. And one more point mentioned here is that you could be an MD, MS or MDS. So essentially these are people who are coming from the medical domain. They may not have a PhD, but they may have some kind of a master's degree. And in such case also, you can apply for this fellowship. Maybe you can go to some medical college and you can do your research there. Or sometime nowadays, even some of the institutes of technology and science have started research centers which have a lot to do with medicine. So you can take advantage of that. Now, regarding break of career, there is an explicit statement here that the break of career is not mandatory to apply for this fellowship. But if they, you are a woman who had a break of career, then you are encouraged to apply. So like I mentioned before, this very large age bound, which has been given 27 to 60, is primarily to bring back into the workforce or into the research force women who may have left the workforce for some personal reason. So unfortunately, this often happens because the 
PhD job market is very narrow. It may be possible that some women may not be able to get a job at a nearby institution or it may be too difficult for them to do a job because they are too specialized and so later in life they may want to get back into the research system and so you can take advantage of the vice postdoc here. Now let's look at the salary. The salary is 55,000 rupees per month. So this is reasonable. There is also a 2 lakh per year research grant and you also get 3 lakh per year for buying some kind of small equipment. So I guess if you are buying a computer, you can get a pretty good computer with 3 lakh rupees. And beside that, the fellowship also funds for the overhead at the institute and also it gives you the HRA. So giving the HRA is very useful because as you know, housing costs are quite high. So if you are somebody who is, for example, trying to work in Mumbai or Delhi, then the housing cost will be quite exorbitant. So you can take advantage of the HRA, but it will probably be easier to get by if you are a scientist in Chennai or in Kolkata for that matter, because there the housing cost may be low. So you need to factor some of these things in. Now you of course need to find a mentor, you need to write a project proposal and you need to give the CV of yourself and your mentor and submit it along with the project proposal. All these things are done in the web page pertaining to this fellowship. So I'm going to put the important web page links in the description box so you can go there and check it out. Now they have provided clear templates for the bio data of the person who is applying, the bio data of the mentor, professor or scientist and also the template for the proposal. So these have been provided by DST as a PDF or Word files. So you can check out the links and plan your proposal accordingly. In the proposal, you not only have to give your research problem, but you also have to give some of the things you plan to buy, some of the details about how the finances are going to be used and so on. So this is very typical of proposal writing. At the end of the video, in the end screen, I'm going to put some links to videos on research proposals which I have made in the past so maybe they are going to help you and one of the things of course is that you are going to have to do some research to seek out an appropriate mentor. This mentor must be somebody who is typically working in a good institution and generally I find that somebody working in a government institution is more amenable to taking part in DST projects, for example. So you can find somebody working in the institution where you are in, the city you are in, and you can contact this person. So again, you will have to give some publications of this person and so on. So if you look at the bio data of this person, the template they have given in the DST web page, it does require that you mention some publications and so on. So again, you can go for various professors who are working in the different universities in the institutes of technologies and don't restrict yourself to only the top universities because what happens is that the top universities get a lot of applications the professors may be very busy so if you spread your bets around into some middle ranked university then you are you often have a more receptive mentor who may have some time and also they may be able to guide you so don't just apply to the Indian Institute of Technologies. Also, you can check out the NITs, which have a lot of very good scientists. So that was my take on the WISE postdoc for women. So this is a very innovative program, which has been launched by DST, and you can certainly take advantage of that. There are more such programs out there given out by DST. So that link is something which you can visit if you are somebody in India and who wants to do his or her research within India. So I'll end this video here and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.